Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. Lift up your hands. Begin to appreciate God. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your family. Thank God for all the many, many good things that He's done for you. Thank God for keeping you. Thank you for. Thank God for uh, shielding you from death, from destruction. Let's appreciate the King of Kings. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. Hallo, be thy name, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. Hallo, be thy name. Yova, Hodio ye di kagi, neti ti banile. Alleluia, Alleluia, Yova, Hodio ye di kagi, neti ti banile. Alleluia. Alleluia, Giova, Odio ye di kagi, ne titi banile. Alleluia. Talo dabire, Jesu talo dabire o, alagbara talo dabire, Jesu talo dabire o, alagbara hoba togbe ogo, kari ogo, lati nu ogo, losi nu ogo, hoba tiki sun, hoba tiki re talo dabire o, alagbara talo dabire. Jesu talo dabire o, alagbara talo dabire. Jesu talo dabire o, alagbara obatogbe ogo, kari ogo, latinu ogo, losinu ogo, obatike isu, obatike ire talo dabire o, alagbara. Thank you, Father. Father, we bless you. We appreciate you. Amen. I want you to open your mouth and pray this prayer. And as you pray it, God, we use this prayer to shake off everything that needs to be shaken out of your life. God, we use this prayer to bury the activities of witchcraft on your life. God, we use this prayer to open your spiritual eyes. God, we use this prayer to increase your prayer fire. I want you to say the prayer loud and clear. Every spiritual coffin assigned against me, roast by fire in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Every spiritual coffin assigned against me, roast by fire in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual coffin assigned against me, roast by fire in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual coffin assigned against me, roast by fire. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual coffin assigned against me, rose by fire. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus, mighty name we pray. Every spell and charm invented to make me lose my spiritual fire, burn to ashes. In the name of Jesus, every spell and charm invented to make me lose my spiritual fire, Bound to ashes in the name of Jesus. Every spell and charm invented to make me lose spiritual fire. Bound to ashes in the name of Jesus. Every spell and charm invented to make me lose my spiritual fire. Bound to ashes in the name of Jesus. Every spell 
and charm invented to make me lose my spiritual fire burn to ashes in the name of jesus in jesus name now say this one loud and clear holy ghost fire connect me to fresh fire in the name of jesus holy ghost fire connect me to fresh fire in the name of jesus holy ghost fire connect me to fresh fire in the name of jesus holy ghost fire connect me to fresh fire in the name of jesus holy ghost fire connect me to fresh fire in jesus mighty name we pray this is the last prayer point say oh god of revival Revive my spirit, soul, and body with your fire. In the name of Jesus, O God of revival, revive my spirit, soul, and body with your fire. In the name of Jesus, O God of revival, revive my spirit, soul, and body with your fire. In the name of Jesus, O God of revival, revive my spirit, soul, and body with your fire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, as we go into your word, open our eyes, break the hardest yoke today. Father, lay your hands of fire upon our lives. Let every cobweb of witches and wizards be completely removed. I command the enemy to remove the hands of our destinies in the name of Jesus. And I order the enemy to take their dirty legs out of our breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Let the fire from heaven burn every shaft away from our spirit and from our soul. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today we are considering the topic and it is the wealth of sorrow. That's the topic. The wealth of sorrow. There is something the Bible calls the wealth of sorrow. We all know that money plays a major role in our lives as people. Money plays a major role in our lives as human beings. We use money to buy goods and services. Quickly, let's turn our Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. It says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and it hardeth no sorrow with it. So, the blessing of God do make people rich. And this kind of blessing, the Bible says, it does not hard sorrow. The Bible says, the blessing of God make people rich without sorrow. Which also means that there are other riches and weights that when you have it, it comes with sorrow. There are weights and riches that people acquired. And as they acquire it, they also acquire sorrow with it. Are we therefore saying that to be rich is wrong? Of course, no. If having money is wrong, God would not have given us riches. God would not have given us wealth. It is stated expressly in the book of Psalm 35, verse 27. It says, Let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause and ye let them say continually let the law be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant i mean look at this verse we just read this passage of the bible psalm 35 verse 27 it says that god is delighted in the prosperity of his servant that is, God wants his servants, his children, to have money. And when the children have this money, God is happy with it. God is delighted. In fact, God is magnified. God is glorified when his children have his wealth. Again, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse number 18, it says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth the power to get well, that he may establish his covenant, which is word unto thy father, as it is this day. 
There are two things are from these passages we have read. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. And two, God gives wealth. What we are saying is this, money is not bad in itself. Money is a legal tender. Money is a medium of a chain. With money, you have access to goods and services. That is, with money, you can be able to procure goods and services. Money is a measure of value. Money is used to measure value. The things you want to buy, it is money that is used in a chain. You want to buy a house, then you go with an amount of money that can purchase the house. You want to buy cars, you go with the amount of money that can purchase the car. And the more valuable the item you want to buy, the more money you will have to pay for that services. Money is a measure of value. The more money you have gives you access to more goods and services. Money determines your purchasing power. In our world today, we have two countries, two different kinds of countries. In the whole of the countries in the world, I mean, the, all the countries in the world are divided into two. We have the rich countries and we have the poor countries. What is the, the description of the rich countries? These rich countries are the countries that have good economy. They create wealth for their people. There is high standard of living. People in this country have access to good health care. The people in this country have good jobs and they are earning good money. They have high per capita income, a good road, good school, access to good housing. And their generally life expectancy is very high in these countries. On the other hand, there are poor countries. Poor countries, they lack basic facilities, basic, basic infrastructure, you know, they, the, the roads are poor, poor, houses are not available, um, lack of good education system, bad road, poor health care services, and generally life expectancy is very low, it's minimal in this uh, country that we are talking about. So what we are saying is good for believers to have money. But God does not want us to have the money of sorrow. God wants us to have good attitude to money. God does not want us to have money that will take our soul to hell. God does not want us to have money that will jeopardize our destiny. The wealth of sorrow is the wealth that you got in exchange for your soul. And is the wealth of sorrow is the, is the wealth that you got and your soul is damned. The wealth of sorrow is the wealth you get in exchange for your salvation. The wealth of sorrow is the wealth that you have. You have access to all the enjoyments of this world, but you go to hell at the end of, the, and at the end of your life on earth. The wealth of sorrow is the word you make the mammon your god instead of the living god your god you know the word of sorrow is the word you get from satan is the word you acquire from the god of money which is mammon and you know that the source of the money you know that the source of the money is not good you know the source of the money is gotten in the wrong way you know is the kind of money you got and your soul is a slave the kind of money you got and you know that the source is not godly you know that it is a blood money you know it's a money that is fraud fraudulent, fraudulently uh, acquired it's a cast money it's the money you obtain by deceit it's a money you obtain through stealing cheating and defrauding all that that's the kind of money that brings sorrow that's the kind of money God does not want us to have. That's the kind of money God warns his, cho his children about. 
God wants us expressly. Money has deceptive power. Money can deceive you. Money can ensnare your soul. When money comes into your life, it comes to occupy the place where God is supposed to be. Money is a bad master. Money will take your soul to hell if you are not careful. God warned us, his children, in the book of Mark, chapter number 4, verse 19. He says, And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering him choke the world and it becometh of fruitful. You find the same story written in Matthew chapter number 13, verse 22. Matthew chapter 13, verse 22. It says, He also that received seed among the tongue is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. From this passage of the, the, the Bible, you will see that it is stated expressly. There is something that is called deceitfulness of riches. That is, riches has capacity to deceive you. That is, riches has capacity to ensnare you. When riches comes, it will trap you. So that it can drag you to this the side of eternity you are not supposed to be. Riches have deceived so many people. Many people have been taken captive by the God of money, which is mammon. Actually, so many people in our world today are controlled by these spirits. It has deceived them to make them believe that. You see, they can only be happy with more money. That they will be happy if there is more money. And that's why people have the attitude of acquiring more, acquiring more. They are never satisfied. Always acquiring, always acquiring, never satisfied. It's a lie. The devil has sold light to so many people that they need more money to be happy. That if they could have more money, they would be happy. Of course, we know it's not true. If it were to be true, then the rich people would be the happiest. But you go, you will see that among the rich people, they are the most unhappy people on earth. Among them, you see the most depressed. Among the, them, you see the high rate of suicide. So if more money brings happiness, look at the marriages of the rich people. It's not working. It has collapsed. You know, which means it is not more money that you need. You know, it's a deception of the devil. Many people have been deceived that, okay, you need more money to be secured. I mean, once you have more money, then you, your security is guaranteed. And that means you are secure. Is it also true? It's not true. More money does not secure you. In fact, there is no amount of money that can, that can be your security. I hope you know that one bite of mosquito can wipe away all the money you have in your back and hand. And at the end of the day, you still die and go to hell. So, money is not a security. There is no amount of money that you have that can secure you. Only God can secure you. Only God is your security. Only the God is your life saving. The devil made deceive so many people to believe that money answered all problems. Money solve all problems. What, what they need is more money. And of course, again, it is not true. The more money you have, the more problems you will have to contend with. In fact, as more money enters your hand, there are problems that money, that more money brought 
that 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 you need to solve uh, and if you don't seek the face of god in fact that that more money can become your uh, can become your trap can become your 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 destruction at the end of the day The God of this one, which is Mammon, when he comes into your life, he comes to occupy the position of God. He, he doesn't want you to serve God. He wants to take the place of God in your life. You know, Mammon is very, is very deceptive. It has captured so many people. Mammon, once he gains entrance into your life, he comes to deceive you. You know, it will make you to believe that all you need is more money. Mama, when it comes to your life, it demands worship. Mama, when it comes into your life, it demands obedience. Mama, when it comes to your life, it wants you to replace God with Him. Mama, when it comes to your, to your life, it will not take 70% of you. It wants 100% of you. It wants to take the whole totality. It wants to control you. It wants to take the totality of yourself. And he wants to control you. And that's why, look at our world today. Look at what money has turned our world to. The world of serious competition. The world of wickedness. The world of injustice. The world of hatred. The world where the human life means nothing. People kill, people maim, destroy anyhow. I mean, look at the kind of destruction that is going on in our world. Look at the oppression of men by another man. Look at the oppression of men by another human being. Look at the level of oppression and wickedness. Look at the level of blood spilling. Look at the level of society disorder. Men will go to any land to get money. Men have sold out their, devil, their soul to the devil. Men have sold out their soul to the devil. Men have gone underward. They have gone to the God of the water. They have gone to all kinds of strange places to acquire money. Many have donated their soul to the devil. Many have pledged their loved ones, their children, their sons, their daughters. I mean, people who are supposed to inherit their property, those who are supposed to continue their names. They have donated them to the devil. Some have even donated certain organ of their body. To the devils there are there are people who have who have vowed to, to the devil that they will never have anything to do with opposite sex they will never have sex with the devil because those were the things the, the devil demanded from them before he could give them money look at human beings you know killing another human being kidnapping selling human being for ransom demanding money on another human being you know torture rape and all kinds of things that is going on in our world today the heart of men have been shared with hot hire ritual killings harm robbery i mean you know harm robbery we hand harm robbers will hand up to people's house and kill the breadwinner and waste and and the, the children will wash their their parents or their father their mother being wasted blood spilling all over the places right in their presence why because somebody wants something and he wants it by force he doesn't care how many people die just for him to be happy just for him to get what he wants he doesn't care how many people are displaced how many people are killed how many people are wasted how many people are destroyed what about the prostitute those who are selling their bodies to make more money you know destroying the happiness of home and all kinds of destructions the other day uh, the, one of the prostitutes was saying uh, well that um, actually it's not the prostitution that fetched them good money that that when they slept with men actually they collected money from them but this money is not this doesn't make them rich it's not the, the big money actually according to her said that when they slept with these men uh they will keep the prayer they will keep the pregnancy and then they will deliver the pregnancy and at that tender age when they are they just deliver the baby in the pool of the blood the body bones the everything is still fragile the baby is crying said so they call the native doctor and the doctor the native doctor will come and buy 
that kind of baby, that baby that is newly delivered in that blood state, in that fragile state. And then the native doctor will collect that baby and use that baby for ritual and pan that baby in the mother. And then because somebody wants more money, look at the kind of wicked heart to waste a child. That child could have been a president. That child could have been anything. You could have been a great person in, in that particular family. Now, that child is wasted. That is to tell you how wicked the heart of men. Parents use their children, of course, for ritual. Many donate their children for ritual. Many have used their, their, their spouses for ritual you know to make more money you know in politician divert the money that is meant for the public the yahoo yahoo boys you know those people that steal through the internet defraud hard hand money of the people some of them will charm people and then collect their money and steal from them all kinds of bribery and kickback corrupt money award of contract that will not be done you know, politician has a way of awarding contract and in agreement with the contractor, the, con the contract will eventually be abandoned and then the money is shared. And, and sometimes, well, even when the contract is done, it is poorly done. Um, it, uh, I mean, a few months, the, 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 the whole system will collapse again and then more money will have to, you know, uh, be, 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 be used again to, to do the same thing that he has earlier spent last sum of money for this is the different ways by which people make money some cheat people some steal from people some defraud people some obtain money by falsehood all kinds of wickedness however what has the scripture got to say about some of these things proverbs chapter 13 verse 11 it says, What gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that is gathered by labor shall increase. The only approved way to increase wealth is through hard work. When you work hard, God will bless you. When you make your money in a genuine way, God bless you. This is the only money that lasts. This is the only money that comes with peace. This is the only money you can transfer from one generation to another. In, in the book of Proverbs chapter number 11 verse 18, Proverbs chapter 11 verse 18 says, The wicked worketh deceitful work, but to him that sweat righteousness shall be a sure reward. When you walk righteously, when you don't deceive, when you don't steal, when you work hard, God will reward you. God will bless you. When you do your work the just way, God will bless you. When you do your work in an honest way, you know, God will bless you. Of course, the scripture warns us in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 6. It says, And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. He says, for the love of money is the root of Hollywood, which why some coveted after they have heard from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Many, many people in an attempt to make money in an ungodly way have lost their salvation, have lost their soul. I, I, I have turned their back on their God. Many, many people have been ensnared by the God of this world. The scripture wants us to be very, very careful. The scripture said it is not possible to serve two masters. You either serve God or serve mammon. You can't serve both of them acceptably. You either choose one and forsake the other. 
However, as I round up with you today, I want to give you these eight commandments of money. Eight commandments of money. The first one is thou shalt not worship money. God forbids his children to worship money. God has expressly stated in his word that we should only worship God. We should not worship any image. We should not worship any man. We should only worship God. Now, like I said, money is a good servant, but a bad master. Money is not meant to be worshipped. When money comes stylishly, you will want to take the place of God in your life. Money will crave for worship. That is the first commandment. Thou shalt not worship money. Number two, thou shalt not love money. We are to love Jehovah, the God of heaven and earth, our creator. We are not to love money. Of course, you read in that passage we, we, we read that the love of money has snared so many people. The love of, of money has taken many people away from God. The love of money, the Bible says, is the root of all evil. Money itself is not bad, but the love of the money will drown men and destroy them. So, you must not love money. Number three, thou shalt be faithful in the handling of money. God demands that his own children be faithful. God is the giver of everything. In fact, as a child of God, uh, whatever God has given to you is a gift from him. And you must see God as your source. Your job is not your source. Your salary is not your source. No human being is your source. God is your source. And so, when God gives you money, be faithful the way you handle the money. Be faithful to God who has given you that money. Some of you, because you because of unfaithfulness, some of you, you are not even faithful in the payment of your tithe. You know, God said 10%. Some of you don't even pay 10%. Some of you, it's after you have removed this deduction and take the other one and remove and pay all the debt and, and then, then you, the remaining one, you now subject them. And that is deception. I cannot deceive God. Whatever a man sow, that is what he will reap. So be faithful in the handling of money. Pay your tithe, pay your offering, give to the poor, assist people around you, help people. And of course, number four, Thou shalt not waste money. God is against wasting money. God is against using money uh, anyhow. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, Gather all the fragments. Gather the fragments and let nothing be waste. You know, God is against wastage. The reason the prodigal son, son suffered untold hardship was because of his uh, wasteful attitude. You know, don't waste money. That money could have been used for somebody's school fees. That money could have been used to pay some house rents. That, that money could have been, you know, put food on the table of a particular family. That money can pay the salary of, um, of missionary who are serving God in villages. You know, that, that, that salary could have been used for evangelism, to buy books or to do, you know, to put the word of God on the television for, the, for people to hear. You know, that, that money can build the house of God. That money can buy organ in the house of God. That money can buy microphone. That money can put something in the house of God that you will be remembered for. And of course, so don't waste money. Don't buy things you don't need and just wasting money and using money anyhow. And of course, number five, thou shalt not put your trust in money. Money cannot secure you. So don't put your motor, your, don't put your trust in money. Put your trust in God. And like I said, there is no amount of money that you can have that can secure you. You know, only God is our source. Only God is our security. And please let it be known to you that money, the Bible says, has a wing. It can fly away. So the person who is rich today, there is no certainty that he will still be rich tomorrow. And the person who is poor today, there is no certainty that he cannot be rich tomorrow. That's why whichever position you find yourself, be nice, don't be arrogant, don't look down on anybody. 
Because that person you think does not have today may be the one that will feed you tomorrow. May be the one that will put clothes on you tomorrow. So may be the one that will help you tomorrow. Be generous, be kind to people around you. Of course, number six, don't hoard money. Don't hoard money. You know, many people you know, for security, for one thing or the other, they hoard money. They hoard money. They are not even generous to themselves. They will have money, but they cannot spend it. You see them feeding on anything. You know, meanwhile, the money is in their hands, but they cannot spend it. They are stingy to themselves. Don't hoard money. Money is called currency. At least it's to be spent. It's to be spent. Spend money on yourself. Buy good clothes for yourself. Eat good food. You know, we've seen people who died of hunger only for them to die and then somebody lift up the their mattress or the bed and they see more money stacked up under the bed they couldn't spend it now the person is dead now so don't hoard money number seven don't steal god said you must not steal exodus chapter 20 verse 15 said thou shall not steal don't take the money that doesn't belong to you don't acquire money in an unjust way don't acquire other people's property and hand it to your home don't defraud people be honest don't cheat people when you people call you for services and or to do one thing or the other for them charge them based on your capacity based on what you think is just and fair don't be unjust you're a market woman don't sell rotten things you know to people don't 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 sell false balances false wages you know to people um then the last one of course is don't let money control you don't let money control you thou shall not allow money to control you thou shall not allow money to control you don't let money control you control money be the master over money you know some people their money will not allow them to sleep money control them when they hear they want more they, they, they are bought, they are high, their blood pressure will rise you know they allow money to con- control them many cannot come to church you know because they want to make more money they are attending board meeting they are attending this meeting they attend when you drop there those meetings will still continue in your absence so serve god with your money serve god with your money don't let money control you i don't let money send you to hell of course you need to remember judas it was because of more money he betrayed his master he sold his master's master for 30 pieces of silver judas was supposed to have a place among the 12 tribe he was supposed to sit in judgment among the 12 tribe of israel but he lost it because of greed because of covetousness because of desire for more money and of course you will also remember Gehazi. Gehazi who was supposed to have inherited the double portion of the anointing of elisha instead of him to inherit the double portion of elisha he inherited leprosy for himself and for his children children i mean Gehazi will have been the greatest man in the bible it is even possible that a Bible, a portion of the Bible could have been devoted to him. You could have had a chapter in the Bible. You could have had a book that is called by its name in the Bible. Because that man will be greater than Elisha. He will operate double portion of what Elisha operated. He will have done more miracles than any other person in the Bible. But he truncated that because of the desire for money. You know, somebody came to his master for prayer. The person was a leprous. The person had leprosy. His name is uh, Naaman. And after the man was healed, he came back, you know, to appreciate the, 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 the man of God. And the man of God said, no, I, I, not now. I don't need what you brought. But when Gehazi had, Gehazi went behind, ran after the man and collected what his master refused. And when he stood before his master, the master asked him, where have you been? He said, no, 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 I didn't go anywhere. He lied again. And the master said, do you think I have spiritual eyes? I followed you. I could see when you were following the man, when the man stopped and handed some things to you and you went and hid those things. He said, for that, this thing you have done. He said, now the leprosy of Naaman that was inside the river Jordan. He said, I call it forth and let that same leprosy come upon you 
and not only you you and your children that was how Gehazi lost double uh, portion of the anointing that was how he became leprous and not only for himself he became leprous for his children children he, he, he gave leprosy to his children children and of course you will recall the story of the soldier that denied the resurrection of jesus you know it was more money they gave to them they told them please don't we will give you any amount of money you need just deny that this man resurrected do you know that was what those soldiers that was what they did they denied the resurrection of jesus because they were giving money you know this issue of money has been playing a very bad 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 role as far back as in the bible and Ananias and Sapphira, so many things that were done in the Bible because of people who love more money. You remember Balaam? You remember that prophet, that great prophet? Because of the reward, he had to, he had to come and curse the people of God. Eventually, he cursed the people of God. He revealed the secret of the people of God. How the Eden nation can destroy the people of God. Uh, because of the reward of iniquity, because of blood money, because of money that has no value, that has no future. Don't go for such money. I want to counsel you. Seek the kingdom of God first. Don't seek money first. Don't place money ahead of God. Seek the kingdom of God first. Any money that you will make at the expense of your salvation is not worth it. You know, the Bible says, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What will you, what will you gain after you gain this war and you end up with Satan? You drove fine cars, you live in big houses on this earth. But when you die, then Satan came to harvest you to hellfire. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Be satisfied with what you have. Be satisfied with what you have. You know, this feeling that, oh, with more money, I will be satisfied. No, no, if you are not satisfied with the little that you have now, you will never be satisfied. You will never be satisfied. Be satisfied with what God has given to you. Why praying for more? You know, increase your value. You know, develop yourself more. Increase your capacity. You know, your ability to earn more money. But not in a fraudulent way. Not to steal, not to cheat. I see God blessing you. I see God taking you to a great height that no one in your generation has ever been. If you believe that prayer, say loud, Amen. Amen. Now, before we go into our prayers, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, this is the right time to do so. Could you please say this prayer after me? Lord Jesus, I am sorry for the way I have lived my life. Forgive me and cleanse me. Let your precious blood wash away my sin. Write my names in the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Now you are going to pray. And this prayer... I want you to pray it fervently. I want you to pray it trusting God to heal your spirit, your soul, and your body. I want you to pray with every strength that you can gather. And I see God touching you as you pray this prayer. Can you say this prayer loud and clear? Say, O oh Lord, deliver me from every bondage. I found myself in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, deliver me from every bondage. I found myself in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, deliver me from every bondage. I found myself in the name of Jesus. Deliver me from every bondage. I found myself in the name of Jesus. Deliver me from every bondage. I found myself in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. By the power in the blood of Jesus, I release myself from every spiritual pollution and from every spiritual contamination 
in the name of Jesus. By the power and the blood of Jesus, I release myself from every pollution and from every spiritual contamination. In the name of Jesus, by the power and the blood of Jesus, I release myself from every pollution and from every spiritual contamination. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Every chain of familiar spirit, every chain of ascensor spirit, time in down, break in the name of Jesus. Every chain of familiar spirit, every chain of ascensor spirit, time in down, break in the name of Jesus. Every chain of familiar spirit, every chain of ascensor spirit, time in down, break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. O God of deliverance, arise and deliver me now. In the name of Jesus. O God of deliverance, arise and deliver me now. In the name of Jesus. O God of deliverance, arise and deliver me now. In the name of Jesus, O God of deliverance, arise and deliver me now. In the name of Jesus, O God of deliverance, arise and deliver me now. In the name of Jesus, O God of deliverance, arise and deliver me now. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you say this one loud and clear? Arrow of spiritual slumber and spiritual dullness fired against my spiritual life. Backfire in the name of Jesus. Arrow of spiritual slumber, spiritual dullness fired into my spiritual life. Go back to your center in the name of Jesus. Go back to your center in the name of Jesus. Go back to your center in the name of Jesus. I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Whatsoever the Almighty God has not planted in my spirit, soul, and body, catch fire in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever the Almighty God has not planted in my spirit, soul, and body, Heart fire in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever the Almighty God has not planted in my spirit, soul, and body. Heart fire in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever the Almighty God has not planted in my spirit, soul, and body. Heart fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You, the spirit of impossibility, fashioned against my life. Heart fire in the name of Jesus. You, the spirit of impossibility. Fashion against my life. Cut fire in the name of Jesus. You, the spirit of impossibility, fashion against my life. Cut fire in the name of Jesus. You, the spirit of impossibility, fashion against my life. Cut fire in the name of Jesus. You, the spirit of impossibility, fashion against my life. Cut fire in the name of Jesus. You, the spirit of impossibility, fashion against my life. Cut fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for a time like this. Jehovah, you are the God of power. All your children that are say amen now, let the conspiracy of darkness against their life be completely destroyed. In the name of Jesus, any power that wants to put sickness on your body, let the fire of God burn them in the name of Jesus. Any form of satanic conspiracy against your progress, against your success, let it be shaken off in the name of Jesus. I pray, let the power in the blood of Jesus kill every sickness in your body. Kill every sickness in your blood, in your bones, in the name of Jesus. I command that the wind of the Holy Spirit will swallow up every affliction in your body. In the name of Jesus, every serpent and scorpion that is moving about for your sake, let them be electrocuted in the name of Jesus Christ. All your blessings that have been warehoused by Satan, I command your blessing to be released by fire, by force. In the name of Jesus, you will not be a failure in the market square of life in the name of Jesus. The testimony that will close the mouth of your mockers, I decree, shall appear by fire. In the name of Jesus, the Lord shall remove your name from balcony of disgrace and palace of shame in the name of jesus 
the Lord shall promote you beyond your expectation. The glory of God shall envelope you in the name of Jesus. And above all, you shall not be a candidate of hell. In the name of Jesus, any power that is promoting redundancy, any power that is promoting blankness, spiritual dullness in your life, they shall die violently. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God Almighty will dwell in Zion. He shall change your story to glory. In the name of Jesus, the Lord shall touch you with his hands of fire. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will open your eyes. May you be spiritually stable, spiritually strong, spiritually dominant. In the name of Jesus, may you not be among those who are rising and falling. May God uphold you and keep you and strengthen you and fortify you and empower you and load you with blessings. So shall it be. In the name of God the Father, the name of God the Son, the name of God the Holy Ghost. Let's say seven amen to that prayer. Let's go. Amen. 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 Amen.